David Hazel. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thanks uh, for the opportunity to appear before the committee this evening. Um, I represent the Sierra Club, and uh, I thought it might be useful also to point out that uh, some years ago, I was the Director of Regulatory Affairs for the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency at the time that the, the regulations, um, many of the regulations under SIA were developed. Um, the focus of my uh, presentation is on the impact of the amendments to the Navigable Waters Protection Act on the federal role with respect to environmental assessment. Um, Sierra Club contends that these amendments uh, appear to be part of a much larger agenda uh, that has basically three, likely to have three outcomes. One is to eliminate legal obligations uh, to carry out federal environmental assessments. Second is to concentrate more discretionary authority in the hands of the environment and transport ministers. And thirdly, to reduce public participation in environmental assessment. Uh, what is environmental assessment? Why, why should we care about it? Environmental assessment is really just a tool to, uh, to inform decision makers on the environmental impacts of projects. And why do we do this? We do this to achieve sustainable development. Without environmental assessment going on, it is likely that you are going to get bad projects or that you are not going to identify uh, mitigation measures that might reduce the impacts of projects that you do want to proceed. In my view, sustainable development simply is not possible in the absence of information that environmental assessments provide. And I want to emphasize, environmental assessment is just a tool to provide information. It, it doesn't, it, 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 no decisions, it, it's not a decision-making process. It's an information gathering and dissemination process designed to assist decision makers. So our argument is that, that basically when you don't do an environmental assessment, you're basically, as a decision maker, you're blinding yourself to the possible environmental effects. You're assuming that you know what's right. And sometimes you do. Um, environmental assessments under SIA, most of them are what are called screenings. 99% um, roughly are, are called screenings, and these typically take a very short period of time to, to, uh, to, to carry out. The ones that uh, excite most public attention are the big ones, the joint panel reviews and some comprehensive studies. Um, with respect to the Navigable Waters Protection Act amendments, um, these amendments authorize the Governor and Council authority to regulate and the Minister of Transport the authority to order that certain bridges, dams, and other obstructions to navigation do not require a permit and thus do not require a federal environmental assessment. Um, the, the extraordinary powers provided to the Minister of Transport to order the exemption of projects from NWT, NWPA permit requirements is not limited to minor projects or works. And this, this, this particular clause that provides the Minister of Transport with these powers under Section 13, I believe, are really one of the most egregious features of the Act. I want to underline that. For example, um, the Minister of Transport could, for example, order the exemption of major projects such as the proposed highway bridge across the Ottawa River connecting Ottawa to Gatineau. Some of you who, with a little local knowledge, perhaps have heard of the, of the proposed Kettle Island Bridge, which goes across a protected area, uh, a, unique, uh, a, a unique ecosystem in the middle of the Ottawa River. It's the, it's the largest um, uh, ecosystem in the Ottawa River, similar. and there's a broad bridge that's being proposed to build, build over that. If Minister Baird wanted to, at the appropriate time, he could say, uh, he could order himself, without consulting his colleagues or anybody else, he could say, we don't need an NWPA permit for that, therefore we don't need an environmental assessment. Bob's your uncle, let her go, boys. Um, so th this is obviously a major concern for us. Now, Minister Baird has justified the amendments uh, on two grounds. One is they will facilitate economic stimulus projects. But the fact is that most delays in, in funding projects out of the 2008 budget were completely unrelated to environmental assessment issues. Secondly, Mr. Minister Baird has justified the amendments on the basis of, that they will reduce, uh, eliminate red tape such as overlap and duplication with provincial environmental assessment processes. Not true, as my colleague has suggested. Now, the NWPA is the most important trigger for federal EA and in some cases is the only trigger for any environmental assessment, federal or provincial. 
Now, Sierra Club has done something I don't think anybody else has done, and I, I don't believe that the transport officials have done, is that we actually looked at the, at the environmental assessment uh, registry. And we looked at all those projects that are triggered by the Navigable Waters Protection Act. And we s selected out those for which the NWPA trigger is the only trigger. That is, the, the, it's not triggered by the Fisheries Act. It's not triggered by the fact that it's occurring on, on Aboriginal lands. No other federal triggers and no other provincial assessment occurring. And that, that's, that information is, is provided in a quite a convenient way in the registry, which is online for anybody to see. Okay, what did we find? We found that nine out of 65 hydroelectric projects and dams were only triggered by the NWPA. We found that 107 out of 173 bridge and culvert projects were only triggered by the Navajo Waters Protection Act. So that means roughly 115, 120 projects that, that, are, that are, are currently being assessed under SIA would not be assessed under the, uh, under the, under the amendments to, to NWPA. Um, now, I've had a chance to look at these, and in my opinion, as a you know, former regulator, very few of these projects deserve to be exempted from environmental assessment. Now, but why is this, why is this happening? Um, how can it be that we could just approve these projects without the provinces getting involved? Like, there's a lot of time. Well, the province, let the provinces look after it. The, the problem is, is that the, the, the provincial laws are very, they're a dog's breakfast. They differ from province to province and they have limited coverage of even major development projects. Take Ontario, for example. The Ontario Environmental Assessment Law doesn't even apply to private sector projects. It only applies to the public sector. And, and public sector projects, such as recent nuclear power plants, have been so, so are so frequently exempted from the environment assessment rules that Ontario's law has long been referred to as the Environmental Exemption Act. Now, take another province, British Columbia. BC's process exempts new highways less than 20 kilometers in length and power projects less than 50 megawatts in electricity produced. Those are, those are both, you can imagine the amount of environmental harm that can, you, can, you can cause with a 19 kilometer highway through a wetland. Now, in some cases, federal and provincial EAs are required for the same project. But again, I want to concur with my colleague, uh, Jay Morrison, who said that since the late 1980s, there have been prodigious efforts by conservative and liberal federal governments to ensure that these processes are harmonized so that you don't have independent federal and EA reviews as we did for the Old Man Dam and as we did for the, um, for the Rafi Alameda projects in the mid-1980s. That problem has been looked after, in my view. It's been completely looked after. And it's really, it's just a convenient, uh, it's, just a conf it's just a convenient device to, um, to, to, to deliver on the government's agenda, in my opinion. Now, most recently, what, what's been happening most recently to, to ensure harmonization? The, the, the current government established the major projects management office uh, under Natural Resources Canada. Uh, minister Lund, when he was Natural Resources Minister, established that. That office is, in, is designed to facilitate major projects through the federal system. A lot of money is being spent on this, and you don't hear that much, you haven't heard much about that from Minister Baird recently, I don't believe. 